in a nutshell, the Barbell Challenge is just an opportunity for me to target different rivers across England, Wales and Scotland. And the ultimate challenge is to catch bar double figure Barbell off of 40 different rivers across the three countries. Now that will take me from the likes of the Bristol Avon through to the Taff in South Wales, all the way up to the likes of the River Wharf and the Ure in Yorkshire, across to Lancashire, where I fish the likes of the Ribble, the Tame, and then all the way down through to my home turf, which will be Kent, and that will be the likes of the Kentish Tower, Medway, and the like. Um, I chose to do the Barbell Challenge because I just thought that my fishing was becoming a little bit repetitive and that I was doing the same things over and over again, both locally and visiting places like the Hampshire Raven, which, don't get me wrong, a fantastic place to fish and one of the most picturesque rivers that we have and being able to fish all of the rivers across England, Wales and Scotland gives you the opportunity to see our countryside at its very best. You know, we're very, very fortunate to have the, the waterways that we do and I just thought that the Bible Challenge would give me a fantastic excuse to explore all of these rivers, whether they be small, short sections or, or indeed fishing large parts of the River Thames, um, the Trent, um, all the way through to, yeah, rivers I'd never stepped foot on before and I just really thought that this was one of the, the best ways of doing it and the only thing I can say is so far I'm really enjoying it. I've had some fantastic trips where I've caught fish within six, seven hours of arriving on a river, sometimes even just 45 minutes stepping foot on a river and then coming away after a couple of hours later of releasing a double figure fish thinking how on earth did I manage that but sometimes that's fishing it's just pure luck and it doesn't matter how skillful you are you got the you're in the right place at the right time anything is possible the reason for me embarking on this challenge I just wanted to see how I could put my ability to catch in fish from rivers I've never fished before we're talking about fishing rivers that have got extremely low stock, you know, really small numbers of fish. And to go 10, 15 sessions where you blank every time, uh, not out of the ordinary. Um, the likes of the, the Sussex Rother, a really difficult river to fish, very few amount of fish. But by targeting that river, you, you stand a very good chance of catching a double if you were to be successful in finding some fish. Now, we can go to other rivers, obviously the River Trent, needs no introduction, it's extremely prolific. Um, it can have its challenges, but by and large, if you give it enough time, you learn the river, you can catch plenty of fish. And I just feel that there's more to fishing than just having 10, 15 fish in a 24 hour trip. I'm now throughout this challenge, I've learned that a lot of rivers just do not have that sort of fishing. And I feel it's just more of a, an achievement when you do come across a river that is really hard to tackle, low stock and indeed when you do get one, as I say, they are big and I just want to put my ability to the ultimate test I feel when it comes to barbel. With the, with the rivers that, that I selected, I started to get some results fairly, fairly soon and I was hoping to chalk off probably four or five rivers per season on the river why I'm hoping that this will uh, be river number 23 but um, if it doesn't happen you know there's always another time an early start for me uh, on thursday morning four o'clock alarm call not quite what i'm used to anymore Thankfully, the kids are a little bit older, so I don't have to worry about getting up so early in the morning and doing nappy changes overnight. But I find with a 145 mile journey ahead of me, as uh, the River Y isn't exactly what I class as local, I find myself uh, heading around the M25 in the early morning traffic, up the M40, you know, it's, uh, it's a long old run. So for me to arrive on the banks of the Y yesterday morning to see it in flood yet again, it uh, makes me wonder whether this river actually runs clear because I've fished it three times and it's been in flood every single time. So I don't seem to have the, the run of luck when it comes to the conditions. Some would argue actually they are probably the best conditions, but uh, I found fishing being quite tough. But that wasn't necessarily the case when we turned up yesterday morning. OK, 
okay. So yeah, again, similar depth as it is. Just down there, it starts to shallow up a little bit more. Yeah, it definitely shallows up here. The deeper water is definitely above us. Let's have a little flick a bit further out. Let's see if it's slightly deeper out in that middle channel. Which it doesn't feel like. It feels like it's similar depth as it is in the inside third. Ooh, that's another rock there. First time I found that one. Okay, so it looks like there's a rock about three foot down from where you are, parallel where our car is, and there's another one about four or five feet below me. So there's a couple of little features there that we can definitely expect to find barbel. Got the swim feeder out because I thought that's probably going to be the best plan of action to begin with. Um, before I actually put a bait on the hook or anything, I've got a few PVA bags out um, onto a pre-leaded spot I found nice and clear, just ahead of a, a nice feature in the, on the bottom. It's creating a slack behind it, which I thought, given the slightly strong conditions, the barbel would be just sat behind those. So uh, I'm going to just wait for the two mil pellet just to finish soaking so I can use those as my plugs for the feeder. But to get the swim kick started, I'm just going to put three PVA bags of six mil pellet on. Now, ordinarily I wouldn't fish like this. This is just to get the swim started. So it's going to be about five, ten minutes before I actually cast in for the first time. But this is just obviously get a little bit of preparation in. And then hopefully within the time that this bait has been on the bottom, if there's anything in the vicinity, hopefully I'll pick up that scent in the water and start to advance upstream towards the baited area. Just get that just to come down and hit bottom. Okay, so we're on bottom now. It's just holding nicely there. And then what I'll do is I'll just give it a minute or two just for the PVA just to melt away. Okay, that should be enough time. So that looks about ready now. So what I'm looking for in terms of consistency is just, just to give it a little gentle press because that's roughly the force I'm going to use when plugging the feeder. Just enough like that, or a little squeeze like that, so it holds its form. But then what I want to do is just break it down in my fingers and when it falls away like that, it's ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a small plug, push it down in my hands, just like that, and use my thumb to press it against my fingers on my other hand. Don't need to use too much, just enough to create a barrier. And then what I'll do, I'll grab some of these. So slightly larger, six mils with some more two mils mixed in as well. Just so it gets to almost level with the top of the feeder. Get rid of those. Go back into here. Grab some of my pre-softened ones. Just keep going until it creates like a, a slight mound. And then allow that just to press in like that. That in the flow will fall away quite nicely and hopefully create plenty of attractant for those waiting barbel just downstream. If it does move across the gravel, then I'll know I'll get little indications on the tip where it will bounce and you'll also feel it judder through the rod as well. So that hasn't moved at all. So I'm hoping that that's a nice solid hold now on the bottom. And as I say, that's just above that little feature that we found earlier. So what I'll do now is I'll pop it on the rod rest, get it into position, and then wait for the magic to happen. The action started off pretty quickly, actually. I was quite surprised, if I'm being honest. That was a bite. We had, I think, two chub and two barbel within probably half an hour, 45 minutes of starting. So I was quite surprised at the fast start. And that's number one in the bag.
after that, fishing was pretty steady. So about an hour, hour and a half after we'd started uh, amassed, I think it was three barbel and about five chub. The biggest barbel was just over seven pounds. So again, pretty average for a while. So I'm just hoping that there was something a little bit bigger there, stayed a bit longer but the chub seemed to have moved in and began to dominate. And it just got to a point where I just felt that the, the barbel were either pushing over onto the far side slack because of the pressure, or the chub simply were bullying the barbel out of the way. So we decided it was probably a good idea to move downstream and start picking a couple of other spots that looked like they would hold fish. I know ordinarily some people look at a swim and they think that, yes, this looks fantastic, and they sit there for the day and they build the swim. Nothing wrong with doing that, but I just felt that I wanted to see a few more of the swims to see what other areas held. And it wasn't a bad tactic because as we worked our way down the stream, uh, we'd get fish at regular intervals. Barbel would often come pretty quickly when going into a, a new swim, but the chub would very quickly move in afterwards. So we'd find that half an hour, 45 minutes was probably enough. I felt though that the pellet was bringing the chub in pretty quickly, so it got to a point where I was just fishing meat and then pellet alternatively to try and keep the chub away a little bit and allow the barbel a little bit more time to come in. Uh, and with the bigger baits, would hopefully put the chub off and allow the barbel more time to actually come up onto the bait and, and catch them rather than the chub, because primarily that's what we're here for. The chub do put up a bit of a scrap, especially when I get to the margins, but that's about it. Barbel definitely looking for something a little bit better. As the day wore on, we got a, a few more fish on the bank. Again, it was sporadic fishing. There would be times when there would be an hour or two we would barely get a bite, um, and I knew that just certain areas just wouldn't be holding barbel. So it was a case of finding those areas where barbel would be and that we would hopefully find them pretty quickly. So uh, just an update as to uh, what's going on today so far. So with the rigs, you got to just keep on top of them because when the fish are picking up the baits, they're going past rocks. You'll tend to find that you'll get little nicks in the line um, and you just you want to make sure that if you do contact something a bit bigger, you want to make sure that the hook link is as perfect as can be to give you the best chance of getting what you've got on the end into the net. And if you've got little abrasion nicks on the, on the fluorocarbon, it can only take a decent barbel to go past a rock or something sharp on the bottom that you can't see. And that can be just enough to break the, the hook link at the weak point and that's game over. So just always make sure that you're on top of the links and yeah, we're gonna hopefully get back into another swim in a minute and give it a go and see what happens. a better barbel. Well, it's a sight for sore eyes, this one. It's um, been a chub fest for the last few hours. Really struggling to uh, get amongst the barbel, but um, finally no one's turned up. I think this is number seven of the day. So uh, I can't complain, it's been great sport. This one weighing at 712. Um, pretty good condition as well, as you'd expect for a wide barbel. So it's, uh, it's nice to get another one on the the bank and got a couple of hours fishing yet so uh, hopefully this is not the last for today but uh, we're going to put her straight back and uh, let's fight another day. Around sunset um, the fishing started to um, pick up a little bit as you would expect for me the first hour of light and the first that the last hour of light and the first hour of dark, probably the best hour was four barbels. So with the rain streaming down, it didn't make particularly comfortable fishing, but got a few more. And as um, we came to a close around about 6.30, 7 o'clock, managed to catch 10 hard fighting Y barbel, which was fantastic given the conditions. The waters cooled down a little bit as well. Some of the chub were coming in with uh, leeches on them as well. So fish are resting up a little bit more than they probably have been for the last few months. With the rain persisting, 
it just got to a point where I just thought, okay, let's uh, let's wrap this up and um, retire to the warmth of the bivy bed chair, you know, proper carp style, but it's nice and comfortable, nice and warm. Uh, had a nice bit of dinner, then finish off the evening, just listening to the chorus of the owls in, in amongst the trees surrounding us. You know, part of the beauty of being out in the, the countryside, it's something that you can experience and sat around the fire um, to finish off the evening before getting my head down after a long, long day. It was a nice way to finish it off. Starting off this morning, nice and early, just as the sun was coming up, I just thought, let's uh, just get to it. So, skipped breakfast, got straight back down to the swim. I started off yesterday morning um, pretty quickly, it, getting a few bites on the tip, and um, no sooner did the, the tip pull around for the first time. You know, I had a barbell on, it's nice to see. You know, another one over the seven pound mark, which was quickly followed by another. Quite soon after, I think the chub did start to move in and then the chub sport again dropped off. So I had a feeling that something else had moved in and lo and behold, we had managed one more barbell that came through before the swim went dead. Now, that can happen, but if we continue to feed, uh, it might bring some more fish up and downstream or pull them across from the other side. But given, again, that the water is a bit cooler, I think it's just trying to find those pockets of fish. As it goes, as of now, unfortunately, I haven't had managed a double, so um, the, the challenge of achieving a double figure barbell off the wire still remains unchecked, but um, I'll continue, you know, watch this space.